Good morning. Welcome to today's Caring for the Caregiver on in-home caregiving resources. I would like to introduce Erica White. Erica White is a licensed clinical social worker that has been in the helping profession in Stanislaus County for almost 25 years. Currently, she's a mental health clinician in our health counseling department, empowering individuals with family, mental health, and behavioral challenges to improve their quality of life. Just a reminder, you can enter questions into the chat box and our video is being recorded and will be posted on our Community Hospice YouTube channel. Erica, whenever you're ready. Okay, excellent, thank you. So I'm gonna talk a little bit today about in-home caregiving resources. Um, if you're new to this, if this is something that you've recently had to take on, we're going to talk about mostly what's going on in Stanislaus County. But once you get familiar with what we offer, you may be able to enter it into your Google search and see if it is offered in surrounding counties or where you're at. So again, in-home caregiving resources. I came across this quote. I think it's very relevant for everybody to keep in mind if this isn't something that you're dealing with right now from former First Lady Rosalind Carter. There are four types of people in this world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, and those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. So all of us fall into this category and can benefit from this topic. Caregiving may be one of the most important jobs in our society, as 21.3% of U.S. adults, or about 53 million people, served as caregivers at some point in the 12-month review period. As we age, many of us would prefer to be at home or with our families, but sometimes we need extra help. With the growing number of older people who need support to live on their own, private and public organizations are now offering many different options in the home and in the community to increase that quality of life. A good place to start is actually a, a document that we offer on our website. It's the Community Hospice Caregiver Toolkit. Um, it's on our website under an education tab. There's one for Stanislaus County and there's one for San Joaquin County. Um, essentially, it's a huge packet um, of one-stop shopping information that will be helpful to have in one place. Um, so hopefully that's something you can access um, when you're utilizing respite, if you allow someone to help you, if you can delegate someone to help you, um, it's going to have everything about your home, everything about that individual, everything about their health insurance, their medical um, or their medication regimen, and in the back is also a lot of these phone numbers um, and resources that I'm going to be talking about today. So what is home care? In home care, also known as home care, is non-medical care provided in the client's home. It includes custodial care for elderly and dependent people. This covers the gamut of activities of daily living, such as bathing and providing medication reminders. Now, we understand it's not always that trained expert, that professional, someone that's done this as a career, as a nurse, as a CNA. Sometimes it's siblings. Sometimes it's a spouse. Sometimes it's a neighbor. So it is common for the support to be provided by friends and family. This can present several challenges as roles, responsibilities, and expertise needs to rapidly change. There's a lot of hats that you wear. Sometimes you're a social worker. Sometimes you're a caregiver. Um, as a CNA in that physical hands-on approach, um, you're an advocate. You're a liaison um, to a lot of bureaucracies. So it's a lot of knowledge that you need to take in. A lot can go with it about the knowledge we do have, the knowledge we don't have, and the guilt by not having it all immediately. But please release that guilt by recognizing your limitations, learning to set boundaries, prioritize your tasks, ask for help when needed, maintain your social contacts, um, understand the importance of your own self-care, um, try not to isolate, and making sure that you take care of yourself Communicate, that includes delegating, that includes making sure there's someone to vent to, um, and seek professional help if feelings become overwhelming. 
Um, for example, again, I'm a mental health clinician. I provide therapy through our HOPE counseling program. And sometimes a lot of things that we discuss is caregiver burnout, needing to recognize that you have the right to ask for help and try to take little slivers of your day to be selfish in a healthy way and not always selfless because I know that you have it in you. Um, Here's a little suggestion. Um, I believe this is in, in that caregiver toolkit that I talked about that's on our website. It's a caregiver's bill of rights. Look through this, see what speaks to you. See if you're asking for what you need and teaching the people around you how to treat you. I'm allowed to get angry, be depressed and express other difficult feelings occasionally. This job is hard. It takes a lot from you. And sometimes it can be a 24 hour job. Read through a couple of those. I have the right to take pride in what I'm accomplishing and to applaud the courage it has sometimes taken to meet the needs of my relative or loved one. So in addition to this, knowing that it is hard and that you can ask for help, and you're not gonna be a superwoman or superman and do everything at all hours of the day and night. Maybe add your own. Maybe recognize that if you become irritable, if you lost your patience a little bit, you lose your tolerance a little bit, you're exhausted. That's because you're human. And so that's allowed as well. Think about your bill of rights, what you need to ask for. This role can bring great satisfaction, purpose and fulfillment. There may also be some overwhelming thoughts that signal the need for additional support. So review this, some, su some suggestions to encourage you to seek healthy boundaries and self-care. And again, add your own as you see fit. Like I said before, caregiving can be a 24 hour job and it would be ideal for it to be the most loving, um, personally known person um, by your loved one's side, but sometimes that's not possible. And it's very realistic to hire a professional to do some shifts for you or to offer that respite. So there are a lot of agencies in town that um, have those trained professionals that can stand in for a break for you to run groceries, for you to go work out or have lunch with a friend. Um, Addis Healthcare, um, Home Instead Senior Care, Apex Care, Provident, Comfort Keepers, um, right at home, in-home care, we have several agencies um, that can provide this service. And sometimes Medicare can even cover that. So arm yourself with that knowledge and um, see if you can call your health insurance, their health insurance, or um, their supplemental care and see if they can help you pay for that. Feel free to take a picture of any of these. I don't know if we email them out, but have your phone ready because some of these slides just have big old helpful lists. So take a picture if you need to. So for example, one of the community resources that we have is called in-home support services. Now this is an agency for Medi-Cal beneficiaries. So again, this is to benefit those that have Medi-Cal. Um, it's for persons who are age blind or disabled and are limited in their ability to care for themselves and cannot live safely at home with help. So you as the neighbor or family member or friend may be able to obtain wages to do what you're doing, to take care of the household, laundry, um, taking care of them, bathing them, um, typical activities of daily living, even running errands such as getting their groceries can be covered um, the IHSS social worker will come out and assess what it is you do to keep that loved one safe in their home. So that's going to be that meal preparation, personal care, laundry. And this is a Stanislaus County agency. But again, it's different variations and iterations of this is in most counties. But just keep in mind, identify your needs and try to research help because we do have a lot. Support and assistance is available. It's helpful to know how to access social workers in the area, 
um, or the Area Agency on Aging to get your needs met. There are several um, food provisions. Um, there's utility um, discount programs for someone with um, medical equipment that may be a strain on your utility bills, like needing to keep the household hot or cold um, to prevent some symptoms of their medical condition. Um, there's respite, there's home modifications, durable medical equipment, um, ways to get ramps placed in your home or grab bars. So try to identify needs that would help your stress and make your job easier and be ready to take down a lot of phone numbers I'm gonna to provide today. And if the loved one that you're caring for is still mobile, keep them social, keep them moving. I understand that we have a lot of programs like Healthy Aging Association, the City of Modesto, the Senior Center that do strength training such as Tai Chi or low impact yoga, um, chair exercises even because what we're learning is that even isolation and loneliness can contribute to um, medical conditions. So it's wraparound, very holistic care that we're providing. Stay connected yourself. While tending to the well-being of others, it can be difficult to stay connected with friends and family. Allow various supports to accommodate this need. There's a lot of crisis lines. There's a lot of not crisis lines. Companionship, socializing. For example, the friendship line. Um, that's a service that's provided to caregivers or older adults if you're just seeking someone to vent to. Uh, call in chat rooms used to be called Senior Center Without Walls many, many years ago. It's now called Well Connected, but I feel like the previous really described it. And you call into these essential telephone chat rooms and you can talk about old movies, um, bird watching, um, just all kinds of a, a variety of things. And you go on their website and you can look as if you're applying for a community college or summer school, if you will, and they have a catalog of topics. Um, but stay well connected. Make sure that your needs are met and their needs are met. Um, dignity, at, dignity at home. Make sure that their wheelchair can get in and out of that home so they can go out, go to the farmer's market. <clears throat> if you need to step away and, and have a quick coffee with a friend, you might benefit from, and if it's safe for that person that you're caring for, a personal emergency response system. So that's going to be like medic alert. Um, that's going to be uh, St. Joseph's Lifeline, that pendant that they can call to um, contact first responders or you as their, um, their lifeline support, their first responder. Um, there's food delivery, on-site distribution centers. So you can have food delivered to your home. You and your loved one can go to the concrete lunch sites and sit with, um, with people and talk and, and have um, food provided. They take small donations, but they understand if that's a hardship for you. Um, if your loved one is a veteran, I was just down at the San Jose County Veteran Services Center on Coffee Road, and they have live music and dancing and food. I think he said they do it every Tuesday um, and every Thursday. And so research that, that you can still get out in your world and socialize. So to kind of categorize a lot of what I've gone through, um, let's start with transportation. Several programs, um, some that come to mind is the Senior Assisted Transportation Program. So that's Catholic Charities. They can pick you up and take you to your medical appointments. So at 1506 H Street in Modesto is our Catholic Charities Agency. They take volunteers, if that's something that you're looking for as well. But they can also shuttle you to your doctor's appointments. The MOVE Bridges program, they offer a lot of things like teaching someone how to utilize transportation. The Bridges program is, our vol is their volunteer driver program that actually helps reimburse uh, gas mileage. So if you're just that neighbor down the street that's reaching out and seeing if they need a ride, um, you can actually be reimbursed for your mileage to do that. Um, the MOVE program is their travel training program. So if someone recently um, needed to start using a wheelchair, and um, they needed to, they lost their ability to drive. Um, they can be shown and trained and they actually follow them until they're, they show that competency to go out in the community um, to use our public transportation. 
Um, they also have the VETS van, and um, that can be individuals that are able to be picked up and transported to Palo Alto, Livermore, Stockton, Sacramento, VA systems of care. So the MOVE program, they're over on Cisk Road. They recently moved from Coffee Road, so I'm looking at the old address, but that phone number is still accurate. They also monitor that VETS van program. So, and all of these take volunteers. So if you're on that end of the spectrum, go make yourself helpful and socialize with these individuals that would really appreciate you. Okay, so transportation services, mental wellness, a couple things that we've talked about, the friendship line, the well-connected chat rooms, Project Hope, is a program that sends clinicians and trained mental health professionals into the home to assess for depression, to see if we can lighten their mood. Um, Area Agency on Aging is that phone number. They're a huge kind of umbrella agency that does a lot of screening for many, many programs that I talk about. So if you just remember that 558-8698, that'll get you to a lot of these things. Their information, referrals, screening, um, so Project Hope is really helpful. Separate from that um, is Friendly Visitor. So this isn't going to be, you know, to where they're depressed, to they're really apathetic or hopeless or helpless, but they could use a little companionship. Um, someone can come and play check, uh, checkers, chess, um, paint with them, read them the newspaper. That was somewhat something that, that really brought them joy is to read the newspaper, but maybe their eyesight isn't the same or just wants to talk politics with them. Um, that's that friendly visitor program. So look into that. The crisis lines, keep in mind, 988. Um, that's also 24 hours. You can text it. If you just text hello, someone's there for you 24 hours a day. Um, it's also bilingual, so you can text hola and you'll have a, a Spanish-speaking crisis worker. Um, keep in mind the Stanislaus County Library can deliver to your home. They can deliver books and they also have a system that's very similar to having a Kindle um, and that you can download books to um, where you read your books. So your electronic device. So look into that. The Healthy Aging Association is available. They're the ones that monitor, among other programs, uh, the staying active. They do Zumba Gold. A lot of these are at um, the Modesto Senior Citizens Center on Bodum. They do dance therapy. They have Tai Chi. They have yoga. A nice um, collection of these can be found in the City of Modesto Parks and Recreation Guide. Um, the fall one was just released August 7th, so that's on their website. Nice catalog. I'm looking at the summer one, but they have entertainment. You can learn how to use the ukulele. They have walking groups, bridge groups, bunko, mahjong. Um, they have a craft circle, Matt Pilani, Pilates, a lot of good stuff. That's the summer offerings, usually real similar for the fall. So go ahead and look into that and stay social. And let's see. So here's a breakdown of that assistive equipment, devices, durable medical equipment, um, home modifications that I've been referring to. DRAIL is a really good program on allowing people with disabilities to stay independent in their home. So that 209-521-7260, they're gonna have information about accessing, um, accessing assistive technology. So that's gonna be grab bars, where to find wheelchairs. It can also be, um, and VIPS is good at this, um, the, um, the program for someone that's lost their eyesight. They can come and and put some modifications in your home so you have braille like on your microwave or on your landline. Um, Medic Alert, St. Joseph's is really helpful. St. Joseph's phone number is 209-467-6468. That California Connect, it used to be that acronym CTAP. They are able to get you those TTY machines, those large numbered phones um, for the visual and visually impaired. Um, loud, you know, uh, um, so where you can hear it, um, adjustable audio. So Dignity at Home is that um, home modifications program, grab bars, safety in the shower, safety getting into your home. Um, 
So California Connect, vision, hearing, speech, memory, and mobility accessibility. Um, they can have mobile phone accessories, speech assistant, um, closed captioning, amplify the big buttons on your phones, your landlines, your cell phones. So a lot of good agencies making sure that you can access your world and your friends. Support groups. Like I said, you're dealing with a lot and it would be lovely to hear from other people that are going through that. So a lot of the information that I have access is found on our Stanislaus County um, calendar on their website. Um, another good source of information is the Valley Caregiver Resource Center. They're over on McHenry Avenue. Um, community Connections, that's through community hospice here, the virtual, in-person um, education, uh, caring for the caregiver in the same vein. So please call our reception and, and get a list of the trainings and the support that we offer through those. Um, the Alzheimer's Association and Friends Are Good Medicine, wide range of support groups. So that's gonna be medical conditions like Parkinson's, in addition to Alzheimer's, dementia, multiple sclerosis, um, addiction, it's, it's categorized. So it's gonna be pretty much any support group in the area of Stanislaus County. Um, so that's Friends Are Good Medici Medicine, and you can download a PDF and see what they're offering. Um, another good resource center is our local hospital. Um, DMZ Foundation and Sutter, and um, they're going to have their own um, support groups for learning how to live with certain medical conditions. So any of that, get your circle of support involved and ask some questions. Okay. So some information about meals that are available. The green bag, that is um, administered by the Healthy Aging Association that we talked about before. So this is for seniors. The green bag program provides 10 or more pounds of fruits and vegetables distributed to over 250 qualifying individuals once a month throughout Stanislaus County. So look at that program. It is um, income-based. So go ahead and get some information from them and find their locations, their distribution centers, and see if that's something that is available to you. Um, senior lunch programs, the on-site congregate centers, um, go ahead and get that list. An example, like I said, is that senior luncheon that's over on the Veterans Center, 3500 Coffee Road, Suite 15. Um, they have a lot of coffee drop-ins, live music. Uh, they have a full bar, and um, but they have lunch that's served. So that phone number is right there. Uh, a lot of different programs for them. Like I said, I was there this morning, and the whole room was full. It looks like a good time. Feed Modesto, they have changed their name, I feel. Uh, but it, maybe it used to be called Interfaith Ministries. But I believe that phone number is still the same. That is, you know, they're going to be available to come and pick up groceries. Um, Second Harvest of the Greater Valley. Also, they take a lot of food from Panera, um, from a lot of restaurants, and distribute it to those in need. So see what the latest information is on their program. Um, so Interfaith Ministries is on Kerr Avenue uh, near the Mission. And you bring your ID, proof of address and income, take home some healthy groceries. Sounds like they also have a, a closed closet in addition to that food pantry. So see what they're offering. I came across this information and it was during the pandemic. So definitely call. But Second Harvest of the Greater Valley, they were connecting and collaborating with DoorDash. And um, Project Dash was delivering groceries. So that phone number is still the most recent I have on hand. See what they're doing. See if that continued. Um, but the senior luncheons, a lot of the other sites are throughout Oakdale, Patterson, Newman, Grayson, uh, Turlock, Salvation Army. So connect with the, them and see what they can do for you. So another summary, just a good start. I know sometimes the role that you play is um, social worker and it helps to have um, social workers in your corner, uh, advocacy and liaison 
agencies. So a good one is the multi-purpose senior services program. They provide case management for Medi-Cal beneficiaries. You will probably be in contact with them if you're, um, you know, looking to explore IHSS or, you know, other things for the Medi-Cal beneficiary that you're caring for. So they're going to have some good information. They might be able to be assigned um, the person that you're working with and even give an extra layer of support. High cap Medicare liaisons, that's going to be all those questions. Medicare Part D, they're going to start sending all that mail. What prescription drug plan should I enroll in? What does it all mean? Um, should I apply for a supplement? What will they pay for? What's Medicare Part C? Um, what's Medicare Part A versus Part B? Who pays the physician? Who pays for the, um, the hospital bill? So that's going to be great. You get those confusing letters from Social Security Administration or your Medicare. Um, what what bills that they, they're trying to get you to pay for and how you can maybe get that paid for by another supplemental program. So um, they will help you. They will sit on the phone with you for the most part um, and try to explore that red tape and those bureaucracies to get your Medicare taken care of. Those are some good agency needs. So speaking of Medicare, um, if the person that you're caring for has Medicare, you're eligible for what's called the Family Caregiver Support Program. So if you're a caregiver and you realize that you're depleted, you need to go back to your Bible study, you need to go back to those lunch dates with your friends, um, call this program and see if you can get, it varies based on where they're at in their fiscal year, but see if you're eligible to get a respite paid for. So they'll access those in-home care providing agencies that I gave a list to, a couple of those that they have contracts with, um, they will get a paid professional in the home and that would be a free service to you. Um, so these are gonna be the beneficiaries that don't have Medi-Cal. And so if you need respite, look into this program, see if you can get a couple hours um, every couple of weeks or so that you can get away, do a little grocery shopping and have that respite covered by a paid professional. Um, so look into that. And then typically it's renewed their fiscal year if that's a need that you still have. I talked a little bit about Catholic Charities and their transportation program. They also um, have a homemaker program. So a little bit of assistance with light housekeeping, um, so if that's something that you're just burnt out on, you can't get to that in addition to the medical appointments and picking up the medication. Um, look into that, see if that's something that, that's available and that you're eligible to. Um, the, but there's a lot of agencies that have the wraparound services that know that these seniors have a lot of needs. Another summary of the community resources, the Family Caregiver Resource Center, I briefly mentioned that, but look into them for respite, support group, education, classes, legal consulting, um, Alzheimer's Dementia Support Center, they have respite, Alzheimer's education, look at their websites, get to be part of their mailing list, um, just link in with these people. Um, Area Agency on Aging, if you know this phone number, you're gonna be connected to the senior services they're aware of or they screen for, or they're very well-versed in, in a, pretty much everything I've talked about, I'm sure. So one-stop shopping, like I said, if you just know this phone number, they're over there at 3500 Coffee Road and a lot of other agencies are, are in there. So they're gonna be really familiar with even veteran services, Healthy Aging Association. Um, just identify your need and give them a call. So get your phones out. Here's a lot of things. I know I went through this information really quickly. Here's their phone numbers. Um, one thing I didn't mention is a Veterans Administration. If that's someone that you're caring for, make sure that you go and register them, get that DD-214, order them, order that document and try to get them while your person is, is not bed bound, mobile and register them for services, see what they're eligible to. I know a lot of families I've worked with, they pay for what's called aid and attendance and it's essentially paying for you for your caregiving services. So um, looks like everything else I went through. Um, there's the website for that well-connected program that I talked about. I had the phone number earlier, but covia.org, that's gonna have that, that um, catalog of topics. The Lifeline Personal Response Service, they can touch a button or they can 
um, access or utilize that pendant around their neck if they've fallen, if they've slid between the bed and can't get out and you've stepped away, um, maybe have that um, be something that they wear around the clock. A um, little bit of information again about programs that I've discussed. Online support, sometimes that's where we can't leave the house. A lot of Facebook groups, um, a lot of websites, that's just a lot of education, newsletters that you can be on, um, you know, just to really validate what you're going through, educate you on how to get services, how to get financial aid, um, educate you on the medical condition that you're treating. Um, so a lot of this just had good information. And it, yeah. And uh, just a couple references that I read through a uh, good housekeeping article that I referenced through here or just used to know what framework would be helpful to you guys. Um, but don't forget to explore respite, take care of yourself. There's a link if this does get emailed to you um, for our toolkit, but essentially it is on our website and you would go through that education tab to link on it. I broke it down under the education and then you click on community connection tab and it's called the community connections toolkit so it's a 75 page document so I know that's a lot on your printer and resources but it just if you do have someone that comes in to take care of your person for respite it's a list it's a booklet that lets them know when they eat when they take their medication what their insurance is it just is very educational. And again, it has a lot of these resources in the back and it has that bill of rights for caregivers. So um, we really tried to cover everything with that. So I hope that covered a lot of information for you guys, um, but let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Erica. There was a question earlier and it, the question was, are there caregiver professional services listed in the toolkit? I went ahead and responded in the chat box saying that they can find a variety of caregiver support as well as other services listed under the resources tab in the caregiver toolkit. Right. There was another question and the question says, is there an income qualification for assistive equipment and devices? Sometimes there is, sometimes there is not always. Um, so the, um, Drail has their own program, and then um, Dignity at Home has their own program. So you would just have to reach out to them um, because sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Let me see if I have. I would be home mods. Let me see. Okay, I have a brochure here and it does not mention that. It's Dignity at Home, it's a fall prevention program. Their mission is to reduce the number of debilitating falls suffered by older adults and persons with disabilities in Stanislaus County. Sometimes these are just grant-based and they just care about taking care of our seniors and it's not income-based. So like I said, I have this huge brochure here and it's not mentioned, but you will get the most up-to-date information if you call that agency directly. Thank you, Erica. And several people said, thank you for the resources and thank you for providing such wonderful information. If anybody would like a toolkit, you can call us here at Community Hospice and we're happy to mail one out to you. Uh, the telephone number here is 